There are two types of batteries generally, power batteries and energy batteries. And uh, we have very high rate on an energy battery. And frankly, in electric drive, it's almost ideal because the battery is very large, so the actual pull on the battery is low. So that fits beautifully. I think your real question might be implied is how do you keep up with innovation? It is actually really difficult to commercialize. So if I recognize the current reality, which is still Sony, Sanyo, Panasonic, LG, and Samsung, there, are, there were, in 2005, maybe 50 startups in the US, maybe 50 in Europe, and maybe 200 in China. Uh, there are very few that are going to make it, actually. So I think part of the journey is not to worry so much about the competition, but really execute on what other people believe in you to do. And that's really my only advice on that. Yes. You said there are 200 startups in China. What policy is different that China has so many more than the rest of the world? It is a very large country, and they are very explicitly going after energy. So in their political mandate, there's energy and water, waste, and efficiency programs that are very explicit. And I think that drives and inspires entrepreneurs. Yes. Right now? Yeah, I am in the luxurious position of uh, not being quite finished with this one and having the time to look at a few. So I should be able to come back in a year and be very precise. <laughs> yes. How do we? Okay, great question. So I firmly believe that we need to get out of the consumption hysteria that we're in right now. And uh, even with all this capacity, manufacturing capacity, Boston Power will have less than 2% market share. So I think there's quite a way. So I think, actually, I think it's very simple. If you have an opportunity to run your laptop on our batteries, you will never again bring a power supply because you can trust that it stays that way and you will never again accept the other type of battery. So I think you just need to experience. I think the same for a car. If you get a, have a car with 10 years battery life and all the joys of electric drive, you will never again go back. Yes? How did you just approach such a big company like HP and pitch your idea and then just convince them to give you bunches of money? To... Oh, come on. Wouldn't you take my call? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I knew them, actually. I had helped them before, so I was a consultant at Arthur D. Little Technology Innovation, and I called them and said, hey, this is Christine, I've started a company, and they said, yes, we've heard, and they said, can you come in tomorrow? I said, no, but I can come in Wednesday, so that's how that worked. <laughs> I wish the other story was true. But <laughs> I did my PhD in lithium-ion battery chemistry, so I was quite knowledgeable about the basic technologies. And all of my career up to starting this company touched or had implications of lithium-ion batteries. I was current in that market, so I knew that nobody was addressing this segment. Yes? Great question. So I, I try to influence the industry. I, I am active in World Economic Forum. I, am, I was very active in the COP15 negotiations with the United Nations. I sit on United Nations Inter-Academy Initiatives, their advisory board. So I try to help influence that this is possible and easy to do. Uh, as a producer of batteries, you have to be very resilient in what you say, but you also have to be very focused on what you do. So I feel as Boston Power, the main task is to make a great battery and then inform our customers of the opportunity of recycling. Those facilities exist, but it really becomes the responsibility of our customer. Yes? Could you talk briefly about the motivation for starting with Boston Power? What inspired you? Yeah. And some of the technology innovations that make it so um, safe. Yeah, great. 
So I started the company because my company that I worked for, R3D Little, really changed. One. Second, there were explosions in the field that I felt were morally not cool. And I saw this huge market opportunity. Nobody cared about the consumer. And I felt like a grassroots. I am very privileged. I've gone to great schools and participated in some serious forums. But I feel like I am just the person on the grass and I need to protect you know, the, the people. So I am a voice of the people. And I think that actually is the biggest driver for me. Um, on the technology, the thing that makes it safe is actually a recognition that is complicated. And you know this well, like, that if you pitch to the venture capital community, they will say, what's your secret sauce? What's your silver bullet, right? I didn't have one. So I said, our silver bullet is our experience. There are 30 things in our innovation kit that matters. It's chemistry, it's mechanical engineering, and it's electronics, it's manufacturing principle, and it is this team that can access these marquee customers to lead the way, and it's a real market, and here's why. So it was a very not so traditional, perhaps, VC approach, but it worked really well, actually. 